Mike of Van and Melonine, and well met indeed. I'm Arakir Galajoth, and head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer, and welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we continue on as Isengard. Saruman himself leads our forces now in an attack on Ginyard, where Rohan's gathering to um, hold us off. Uh, Dwin here, who has been going back and forth for some time, seems to be creeping closer to his actual destination, which I'm assuming is Eastern Gondor. He just doesn't know the fastest way of getting there. But he's never made it to Fuldberg, so hopefully he'll actually continue going east. Uh, to the west, Bregnas Fail to Dunland, and we are now boarded by our ally there, but Enidwife, of course, is just a small distance away on the southern side of the river down there, the Adorn River, which is what we're looking at at the moment. Oh, excuse me, sorry. I'm yawning. Highly unprofessional. Um, right, uh, we're going to be attacked by um, Rohan, that is certainly for true. We've assembled an army that we think can do what must be done. Um, in there is Prince Oldwolf, who is Rohan's now current heir. Alduini stands outside shit? with more Rohiric trash, and also Captain Elfind yeah. comes with some trash Ow. too. Captain Hengist is mingling around there. But they're not going to take Helm's Deep back because Ugluck now holds it firmly. But we are losing money because our army is so large. But let us end the turn and see where it takes us. I must say thank you very much indeed to every single one of you who commented on the 40,000 subscriber video. It was nothing but a shower of um, positive comments and that was absolutely wonderful to read. So thank you very much for that. I had great delight in reading all the comments yesterday. Um, so thank you. Thank you to you all uh, quite sincerely. Uh, Prince Oldwolf, you are going to be part of this battle, but in an absolutely bizarre twist, Captain Hengist has an attempted a night attack, which means his own reinforcements can't join. Uh, but it is only 295 units, but they would have had 294 more if they'd just not bothered with a night attack. But anyway, everyone else is coming. His portrait's funny, it's got lines around the edge. Um, they've got th two generals in in play, so they'll fight a little better than normal. We're being attacked by Hengist, so um, Alduini is going to come from to our left, but Oldwolf will come from behind. This is going to be quite a challenging battle, I think. It'll take all that we have to hold back this, but if we do crush this quite sizable Rohiric force and take another town from them, it really, it, the clock really is slowly ticking towards the 12 on uh, the lifespan of Rohan, isn't it? Um, I don't think they're going to last much longer. Right, so as we say, we've got the small army that actually attacks us coming in from there. Then Alduini is coming in from over there. And right back behind us over there is Aldwolf. So our best bet is to pull to, well, this area really and then we've got them coming on our left and the other two coming directly in front of us so that is what we shall do archers take your positions in the fort come you're probably to be relatively useful today actually because we're up against rohan and they're not renowned archers so we should be all right now, we don't actually have very many spear units, so having said that we'll be alright, um, is just a lie, really. <laughs> um, everyone just come and stand like that for now, and we'll move you when uh, we can actually move to the back here. I'm ashamed to admit that we are definitely going to incorporate something of a noob circle. But there we are, as expected. Oh dear, they're actually going to be coming in right behind us because they're such a wide army and cavalry always goes on the edge. That's disappointing. Right, so archers, come and face this way. So we've got mostly cavalry coming in from behind, so we can deal with them shortly. Raiders, come and stand just in front for now. Dunedin pikes, come out of that. If you would be so gracious. Um, we're going to need you on the flanks. Oh, I don't know what to do at all because they're literally going to hit behind us. But then to move, position, reposition, no, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put the pikes there like that and we're going to cheat, basically. Because why the hell not? And then we will form our wonderful noob circle in the snow here. <laughs> oh, we've got a spear unit there. Yep, you can go on the flank. That's nice to see. So archers, new plan stand there and the other units kind of stand in front 
Where did we get to in the line of making our... Well, we call it a noob circle, but in history, and indeed when I used to play the older Total War games, this wasn't a noob circle as much as it was a phalanx wall. Um, but of course, the in hellishly overpowered phalanx units don't exist in Medieval 2. Pikes still have some punch to them. But of course, many of you will remember the insanely overpowered um, pike and uh, phalanx units from Rome 1. I'm looking at you, Sparta. You guys move into there. And then we've got the armor piercing units. I'm not really sure where's best to post you, to be honest. Um, and Lurtz, of course, is actually our best anti cavalry unit in play today, aside from possibly Saruman. That wizard should know better! Right, everyone into positions. If we would all... Oh, that's not select all. It used to be, but it isn't anymore. <laughs> Let's watch them all run. We have to just do it with the mouse. If you could all run. And if I've forgotten anyone, we'll move them in a moment. We have. We've forgotten those, haven't we? And that you're just clogging up the system. Oh, but there's nowhere for you to live. They're going over there. i tell you what, we'll move you there. You guys go wide and cross that line. If you guys go wide across that line. Right. The pikes are in position. That cavalry unit will come in there. But the pikes are going to have to... Let's move those orcs to there like that. Orcs, sorry. And pikes move across that line like that. You guys move out of the way. Right, and then you stop pikes down. <laughs> this is so cheesy, it's unbelievable. It's I always feel disgraced in doing what I'm doing. We caught the side of those Rohan riders. It's very quiet in my head. There we are. Aha! We got them. Some of them did make it through, but they're only scouts. Uh, they'll get killed off by those Dunlending pikemen. But it looks like their cavalry's hand has been forced. Much in our favor. Victory will be ours. Oh, and a perfect, perfect, perfect foolishness from the AI. They've charged their bodyguard into our only spear unit. The whole of our anti, of our non-anti cavalry selection here, and they've chosen to charge the one unit that will actually do well. Uh, our archers are taking more of a pounding than one would expect. They're only scouts. Come on, people. All right, come out of that then, and just move into them. It's just a mass of orc, isn't it? Orc and Uruk. Punch out through the lines. Oh, our cavalry will die. That's not a problem. I'm very careless with cavalry. It just doesn't really bother me. Particularly when you've only got 46 Dunlending horsemen. It's hardly uh, going to turn the tide. It's not like Swan Knights are on the prowl. Right, well done, Pikeman. Now pull down there. We're going to use you to curl around. There is more up here that has not properly entered the battlefield, and I don't know why. Maybe Aldwini didn't actually want to get involved in the fight, because he isn't bugged out. He's just sitting back there for no reason. But it's evenly matched at the moment. It's just disappointing. And we've actually got our archers, because of where we've lined up our men, that we're not utilising the hill to the best possible... Uh, it's, it's, it's to the best of its possible benefit. Right, let's. Let's chuck you out. We can clear it. We can, we can sort of let you go for those. The enemy are badly out. They have lost half their men. We'll open up our right hand flank. Ah, oh, yes. Pikes. Those royal guards. This is your moment, your chance to shine. I don't know what the Rohan general actually looks like. Um, he must look different to the others, surely. Is that him at the front with different armor? Is that armor different? No, it's just bloody. 
I don't know where it is. Well, there's the banner carrier. And... No, not a clue. I would have thought he had sort of fancier golden armour or something. There's hardly any of them left though. Whoever he is, he's shortly to die. And of course we shall very much lament his passing, I have no doubt. Archers, you can all move around. There's our enemy there. Let's push out and hit them. We don't want Lurts to get shot. The one thing Berserkers cannot do is stand up to arrow fire. So he must approach his target swiftly and bring them down before they can start shooting him because they will die. Uh, they Berserkers have absolutely no defense whatsoever to arrow fire unless they've got an armor upgrade, which fortunately our ones have. So we've got a bit of an armor upgrade, but it really is not much. Is that Old Wolf? No, that's Captain Hengist. That's disappointing. Alduin, he really is not coming to get involved, is he? Oh, and we've smashed it on that left-hand side. But we've still lost um, just as many as they have overall. Right, you can try and cut across and hit those Elmingus. Right, everyone. No one can be is on defensive anymore. Saruman. Infighting. They never actually do infight. They just sort of get annoyed at each other. I don't think I've ever, in all of my testing, even though I've just attacked them, which negates any infighting anyway, but um, in all of my testing of using the infighting, even if setting it for quite some seconds, they never actually kill anyone. I've never seen anyone die from infighting. They always just sort of stop. It's more of a paralysis than a... Than a um, than actually what it says it's supposed to be. Which is really disappointing, because it's otherwise a really cool and underused feature, but in truth, it doesn't really do anything. Right, our left-hand side is now also free. And we are getting shot by the numerous archer units that were brought to this battle by Rohan. They're going for that Rohan bodyguard. Lurtz is all alone, but that's all right. Lurtz is a machine war. In we all go. Let's speed this up because this is Only over. Half the enemy force remains. The reason that a great number of the enemy force still remains is because of Alduini's army not getting involved. So we may have to just sit and wait out the end of this battle, unfortunately. Which, of course, I will cut out. But um, I still have to sit here and do nothing while it all passes. <laughs> How are we all doing? Caught up with the enemy. There's a general running around there. Um, he's only got four. Ah, oh, there's only four. So now we'll be able to tell. Ah, there you go. They wear a red cloak. And I thought they had a brown golden armor. Saruman. If you aren't already, shoot the bodyguard unit. There we are. The arrows whisper in. As I'm assuming this is Old Wolf, it could be someone else. Old Wolf. But now they are cutting across the crossbow. Oh, the crossbows are doing their silly arcing shot. It really is raining arrow fire down on him, though, and he's just shrugging it all off. Oh, no! One of his bodyguard goes down, and he's caught in no man's land. He stands still. The, the banner falls. Old Wolf makes a break for the exit. The arrow's still flying in. Oh, that one definitely hit him in the back. He's got an arrow sticking out of his shoulder, but uh, against all the odds, he charges back into Rogue, into our army. A madman now. Bloodlust all about him. His senses stripped. His sanity gone. All he sees is the red rag. And nothing more. He passes. Prince Old Wolf of the Mark. No longer. Right, in case our foe on the other side actually bothers to come and get involved today, let's regroup and wait. So, nice long line, and then you guys form up into one also. 
and I'll take a line along there. Alright, I'm not expecting the enemy to actually do anything, so I will see you likely at the end of this battle. Welcome back. So, the enemy did not sit in the corner and do nothing, and after a while they have actually moved on us. Um, and they came in a sort of, first of all they did just walk sort of towards us, and then they stopped and did a huge turn to, make, to change their lineup to face us this way. Um, and I just kept manoeuvring my forces around and around and around until eventually we were ready, and now we are. And uh, now they walk towards us with some intent. Ah, that was poor. We're gonna get charged. Scouts! Don't worry. They're only scouts. But it is now all on. Right, right hand flank. Curl out. Let's break round. Lertz leads. Lertz is getting shot by the air dead horse archers. It's frustrating. If we continue They're ready. Like this, we will smash the I'm lying on the hill as they're nice and closed in. Don't forget that when push comes to shove, Saruman is actually one of the best melee units in the game. So um, he will prove vital when the time comes. Which I just said twice, unfortunately. You hit on those ailing. Um, where is Lurtz? Oh, curses. He's out there. No, Lurtz, you pull back. You, go and... Only half our force Stop, remains. hold your line. Nice, now break into them. And you also break into them. And you, Yorling Militia. Now we are, of course, knackered. And this army is untested and untouched. So this will... Um, we will take a lot of casualties, but I do think we are going to win, because even though we're, this is a lot of forces we're up against, there's a lot of trash in this here Rohan army, and uh, we excel at killing trash. We've still got quite a sizable number of um, bolts and, and um, arrows left as well, so... But not only that, but our archer units are now ready, and uruk archers are actually quite handy in melee. Um, and so it's useful to use them if you can. Right, that left hand flank is going perfectly with surrounding them. Cutting off any hope of reinforcements. They're breaking out to assist there. You're just shooting. You're Only shooting. Half the enemy force remains. And you're shooting. Lurtz is taking a beating though. Come on, there's only nine riders. Let's get this out when done with. Break over there and help those scouts. Ah, we've got routing. But their general hasn't even died. Oh, but then I, Prince Aldwulf died, didn't he? And he, in the superiority and seniority ranking, considerably outranks Old Winnie. But that is him there, I think. Slayers. Charging into our beast slayers, who happily um, wield spears when they finished with their arrows. Which helps us out fantastically. I think we've assisted Lertz in not dying. Something's still attacking him, though. No, he's getting shot now. Yeah, this is this is definitely over, but we are going to have to offer up some sacrifices to the uh, altar of horse archer fighting. Right, you guys pull yourselves back. Oh, there's some of those over there. No, you pull back, you pull back. Lertz is running up behind the line so he won't die. You guys are going to just chase that Aored Horse Archer unit now until the end of time. Because that is how long they will likely run away for. Oh no, they're charging in. They never do that. Alright, go over there and assist. Why is the Yorling Militia going to try and hit that? No, this, is, this is over. There's just a few units left. We'll speed it up. One such unit is that Rohan Bodyguard. Continue like this, and who's this? Riddermark skirmishes. Stand your ground, Saruman! No, oh, they're, they're cowering and running before they get to us. Lance has survived. He can have died a third time. Brilliant. You run in. You run down. Let's cut back and hit those bodyguard. And our army is also eminently replaceable, so losses here are acceptable and welcomed. Uh, because we need more money. 
Which is always how you want to hear your superiors talking about your life in battle, isn't it? Imagine standing outside the tent when uh, Saruman's saying to Lurt, Losses are acceptable, Lurt, and actually I would welcome some losses. How do you go back to the men and say, so I've just overheard our commander and he would like quite a few of us to die. Clear victory. Lord Saruman the White lost well over half though. Two thirds of our army have fallen, but an absolutely monumental victory. And the Golden Hand, or uh, the Golden Iron Fist, isn't that the name of the Uruk sword? In Then they call it an Iron Fist. Anyway, the Golden Sword goes to, drumroll please, 413 Dunlending Pikeman. No surprises there. When you are out to slay a Goliath, bring a stone and a sling. Dunlending Pikeman, 413. Secondary, Half Orc Bane Guard, interestingly, 336. And then 294, Half Orc Spear Guard, again, not surprising. And then everyone else. Either sort of upper hundreds or slightly lower hundreds. The guard of the hand only doing one three three. Saruman's use as a melee fighter is far outweighs his use as a ranged fighter, because crossbows are so slow. And although cross crossbows in the right, when used properly, are devastating, but if used as sort of just general arch units, they're actually not that good. They fire too slowly, um, and they require their arcing shot is next to useless. Lesser than useless. At least the arcing shot of the arrow sometimes kills things, but the bolts just rarely ever do. Kill them all. Um, Ginyard is a castle, so we'll kill them all as well. There shall be a lot of pyres burning in the Westfold today. Warning off those of Rohan that there will be none spared. The Horse Lords will be driven into the earth and utterly decimated. And in time, forgotten. These lands will be ruled by the White Hand for time and time to come. I was going to say for time immemorial, but isn't it since time immemorial? As in uh, before the days of time being counted? Decline that. Oh, go on then. And the Hornbug built an armory, and we now make so much money. <laughs> because everyone is dead. Well done, everyone. Well done. If you could build me an armory in Kinyard. Rohan have sent what they can. Um, I think we should use this opportunity to get the army out. And build a stronger force. So, Ugluck, staying behind with you. I'm going to want... The spear guard are not that useful in there. They are a cavalry, anti-cavalry. want them on the field. So I'll take you two spear guard. I will take your beast slayers for the same reason. And another spear guard unit there. Um... I don't want to deprive your garrison too much, though. Pick your feet up. It's a trap. Now, Ginyard, I'm not really too bothered about what we keep there. I don't, I'm don't. not bothered about really keeping it. We need to mop up these Rohiric forces here and keep pressing. But hitting Edoras will be a challenge. And we don't have the forces ready for that. Nowhere near. Um, of course, at the moment, we also make no money. I don't. I also don't want to get Saruman and Lurts trapped in a town where they could potentially be starved out. Um, so we shall leave behind some things. I'm not bothered about the cavalry. You can stay behind. Um, 32 of you, 86. No, I will take you. Leave 48 of them. Leave those archers. There you go. Perfect. Merge again. Merge again. Right, so you're going to be the garrison of Ginyard. Ugluck, you're going to stay in the Hornburg. And Saruman, we're going to end the turn and see what Rohan does. Ah, oh, Dwin here did bugger off. I misspoke with Dwin here as well, and many thanks to all of you who corrected me. Um, it isn't Dwin here that dies, but rather his sons that die. And I was right in how they die. They're trampled by a Mumach as they try to approach it to shoot it down. Uh, and it tramples on them. And it crushes them to death. Uh, but Dwin here does not die, and in fact survives the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. Um, with the knowledge that his sons were crushed to death by the giant feet of the Mumakil of the south. <laughs> Probably leading a rather depressing existence till he then passes away of old age. They really don't want Saruman to go anywhere, but they don't have the balls to fight him, so they've surrounded him bizarrely. But Captain Gleothane comes with more Rohirric reinforcements. Back. Don't I have a diplomat somewhere? Service, my lord. You don't have a mission, do you? Ah, yes, we're sending one to Dol Guldur and we've forgotten to do that. An honor, Lord. Well, we won't get the money for it. Once. That's all right. Without we'll pass over, nevertheless. Uh, this is one of the key culprits of the game crashing. 
This is an annoying feature where technically his movement would allow him to go to the other side of the river, but of course you can't stand on water, and his movement only covers that land bridge. And so if you ever get the spinning ring of death, it is normally because a unit is either trying to attack a town and it's crashing on when they attack, but if you get the spinning ring, actually, it's usually because an AI unit is walking across the river, realising it can't stop, turning around and walking back, but then again doing the same calculation over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Um, it happened a lot more in the base game than it does in DAC, and I think that's because we don't have very many land bridges, so it's rarer just because there's less of them. Whereas in the base game, I think there are land bridges in quite a few places, so it happens more commonly. A hundred and ten. Slaughter festival. Twenty-two kills from the guard of the hands. Nothing. Bangard again getting the most. We get money every time we sack their camp, so it's worth it. Is that a general as well? Oh yes, old Winnie, of course. Oh, old Winnie, you didn't die. I would have assumed you did. Oh no, that one's probably a worthy of a real battle. Right, that frees up some more money, and all that raiding has almost nearly gotten us has just gotten us loads of money. Oh, and we ended the turn. No, that's what gave us loads of money. <laughs> You've got to remember how the game works, Gallup. Um, right, we're going to need troops. Have you got any spears units for me? No. I'll take your wags, though. Go on. They are anti-cavalry, after all. Um, if you can, I'll take the berserkers. They're anti-cav. Dundon pikes. The archer units always help. Go on a couple more of your raiders ship them off to the front line as soon as we can. We could do with getting Foldberg a better garrison force. The others though are all right as they are. Uh, and Ginyard there resting. Oh of course because we took Ginyard didn't we and then we upgraded it into a castle and then we lost it. Am I? Is that right or is that wrong? I, I think that's right. And did the ring spawn somewhere and I didn't pay attention? Um... It was, it was miles away, wasn't it? It was like Mithlond or something. So, uh, or perhaps further afield. Or... I can't quite remember. Um, oh, well, well, we'll end the turn anyway. <laughs> this will probably be the final turn. Um, oh, dear. Yes, because I don't want to fight that Gliathane battle. That's going to be huge. That'll be the next episode. And uh, Saruman probably doesn't have enough forces to fight that Gliathane battle, actually. Interesting that Old Winnie has not linked up with that large Rohiric army. And... They're, they're throwing it at us with a captain alone. That seems foolish. But then perhaps we have we have given Old Winnie a fear that he, that he no longer wishes to fight Isengard forces. Oh, Ended White's Lord has died. I don't need another general. It's just money sinks. Ginyard has been repaired as a castle. But remember, it's an Orcish castle, which means it is useless as a battle map. That's one of the downsides of being an Orcish faction, is your cities and settlements are garbage. And they will be as garbage. I tell you what, um, Saruman, if you pull back to the Hornburg... No, Saruman, no you and Lurtz head back to Isengard Regroup, you to pick up that backup army. Sure. Captain Kruklik, you're not gonna... None of the forces we have here are gonna hold off that Thank army, God. let's be frank. So if you pull back to the Hornburg, which is infinitely more important than Ginyard, Likewise, actually, if the Ginyard our garrison is dropped to simply the Dunlending Horsemen, essentially we'll offer Ginyard up as a sacrifice yet again. But this is going to be the way of it, I'm afraid. It's going to be quite a lot of back and forth until we can finally shut down these large Rohan armies. But don't bother building that armory. Um, you can keep the buildings, though, because we'll be able to use them when we move in. But we'll hold it there for now. I tell you, I'd love roads, but... I don't think we're going to get them. I love roads! <laughs> no, we're not going to be able to use roads. We also won't get the, the use of our garrison force because there isn't enough room in our army. Um, we get two units, I think. Is there anything that's rubbish and can be discounted? 45 Reavers. Ah, no, look, there you go. You 85 of you, you go home and retrain. Uh, take those Bane Guard with you too. Because they'll just die. And then that gives us plenty of room. Oh, and the Urukai infantry, they can't be retrained here, can they? No, we need the barracks. We have near got a barracks, so we're not going to be able to do it. You guys move in. Yes, yeah, so you Get return, rebuild. That army will almost certainly take Ginyard. And the Dunlending Horseman is really just as in the vain hope. It's like putting a bike lock around your bike when um, 
a mechanic turns up with all his tools and intent on stealing it. You've just got to hope that the fact that there's a lock there might make him think, oh, I just can't be asked. <laughs> of course that won't happen but I am going to end the episode there so once again thank you very much to you all for all of your support and again just the insane amount of support on that 40,000 video it was fantastic to see and to read and thank you very much for that and Jessica was very pleased with the number of you who thought she was cute um, but uh, she has a little bit of a vein streak and she doesn't watch my videos, so she won't hear me say that. But uh, thank you to you all indeed. And um, until we speak again, dear friends, Nefair Naden Peramad Melonin, and farewell.